All right. Jim Collison here, Home Tech Podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, we are in uh, full pre-show mode, so just hang tight. We'll uh, start the show here shortly, and uh, eventually I'll clip this part off the YouTube video. But uh, if you want to watch us live, uh, you can join us Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Central, over at TheAverageGuy.tv slash live, and uh, we'll get the show started momentarily. We're live, Mike. Okay. I don't know why the it's not showing up for me over here, but it is in the chat. You can see it in the chat. You're sharing. Okay, good. And then let me see. Does this? Oh, it won't matter for you. I'll have to ask the chat once I get once I get the chat up. I want to make sure they can see that Windows 8 screen and focus. I'm looking in the chat right now. I can't see it in focus. How about now? Nope, now see me talking. Well, there's a delay. Yep, there it is. Yep. Okay, so it's up now. Okay, good. Good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, let's... So I assume... uh, Quick check and chat if you can hear us. Renny, if you're out there, I know he's always the first guy, so give us a quick sound check. All should be good. Uh, Let's see... I tell you, Mike, I'm getting used to, so I've been on this touch screen for a while, and uh, you start start reaching out to I know. <laughs> it's really easy to move stuff around, you know, and, and even, um, you know, just a minute ago, I was, I'm getting pretty fast at it, so, you know, come over, uh, grab the, you can watch this live, so uh-huh. so now I'm in the in the desktop. And, uh, you know, in this case, I wanted to get to the Hangout, and if I wanted to turn the, you know, if I want to turn the speakers on or off, I could do that, you know, just up here. Yeah. Um, and then if I want to get back to the, we'll, we'll do this on the show, if I want to get back to the start screen, it's just that fast. Yeah. So you start, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you start messing with it, and you go, holy cow, this thing could be really, really fast. Um, so. Yeah, no, that that looks awesome. That does. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, you were talking about that this PC the other night, uh, either on your show or, or the home server show. I can't remember which one. And I immediately went out to Craigslist and started looking at them. And they, <sighs> I couldn't find them as good as good of a price as you found them. But I tell you, if I'd have found one, what'd you get it for? Like two something. Two hundred straight up. If yeah. I'd have found one, I'd have bought it right that night mm-hmm. and uh, put, done the same thing you did because. There's something different about Windows 8 when it's in on a real PC versus a uh, a, a VM, even a full screen VM. Yeah, I like it. You know, my wife's computer I like it better now. I'll tell you that she never uses the Metro screen. <laughs> yeah, she sees no use in it and yeah. doesn't and doesn't use it. But you know, I don't think you need it on on a regular PC for the most part. Yeah, yeah. But you know, for the for the desktop, uh, once you get past the, the fact you don't have a start button. You know, it's you can you get what you need. Yeah, it's. I, I think it's what I've been saying, which is once you start getting used to it, you start finding fast ways around it, and it's it's, it's kind of designed for fast. And um, it's, well, you, I, it's it's it's. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's so <laughs> addicting to be on this thing. I mean, you're just like zip zip. It's all like Minority Report. You know, you're yeah. just like spam. You know, if you want to, well, we'll talk again. We'll talk about this. So I've got a whole bunch. You can probably see it. I got a whole bunch yeah. of windows open, right? So I can, if I want to just start bringing them out, I can just start, you know, oh, well, maybe that one or that one or that one. I mean, I, I'm i just flipping <laughs> in between, right? I mean, it's yeah. just bam, bam. It's a little slower what you're seeing there. but And then if I want to get back to the desktop. Now, this was, well, I'll talk about it on the show. I don't want to give it all away. Yeah, you're giving it all the way now. Yeah. We'll do it again. Okay, I think, uh, so, so I invited Christian. He didn't know if he was going to make it. I invited John. He didn't know if he was going to be able to make it, and Andrew had a doctor's appointment. So okay. I th- it might just be you and me. We can we can do yeah. this. And I, well, yeah, I, I'll talk. We can talk more about the Windows 8 thing. I got a little bit to say about it mm-hmm. there too, because you know I have done an experiment here with my wife. So yeah, uh, some, no, some I'm, and I'm glad you back. did. At first, I thought, oh God, what have I done? Mike is never going to talk to me again. You know, I <laughs> I say what I think about something, but that I try and keep an open mind, and I will try it anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, well, let's talk at, about it. Yeah. All right. So let's see real quick. Anybody, do we have anybody out? I think Rennie had to leave. He's having connection problems. He said he'd be right back. We have Vinyl Freak. 
Tim, um, are you out there? I hadn't seen Tim's Tim post yet, but he's... Just wanted to do a quick sound check. Again, if you found us, uh, if you're watching this, we just picked up another one. If you're watching this on YouTube or on Google+, Plus, it's the Home Tech Podcast. We're going to get started here in just a second. Started, I said. And um, if you're watching this on the recorded version of YouTube, eventually we'll cut this off. But we start uh, over at theaverageguy.tv slash live about 8 o'clock. We're about five minutes late, but uh, about 8 o'clock each and every Thursday night. Not everyone, but 50 out of 52. And, uh, and we do this at theaverageguy.tv. 8 o'clock like Central. Central. Thank you. Did I say Pacific? I don't know I'm what you thinking, said. I'm thinking about next week's trip to Southern California. So... Tim, can we get a quick sound check from you? I just want to make sure you're seeing and hearing us out there okay in the live stream. A quick sound check. Yeah, next week I'll be and and I I don't I think if I do it I'm gonna have to do it late again where I where we're doing it at nine or ten Eastern. Yeah, so we'll have to see. Yeah, uh, we'll have to see. It. It will be from a hotel room. Well, I have me do hosting duties where all I'll do is just host and sit back. I can do that too. Yeah, th- actually, Thursday night would, would is, is going to be more open. I, I guess I'm thinking about Wednesday night. Okay, thanks, Tim. Appreciate that. Thanks, Tim. Um, Wednesday night's going to be the difficult one. We have I have a networking event that starts at five. I think it goes from five to seven, which would be um, which would end at is that no I meant maybe that's five to seven central. Yeah. It gets done at 7 Central. It's earlier in the afternoon there. So I'm going to have to race back to the room and set up. So I, I, It's show 200. i got to be on that show. I mean, I cannot. Oh, well, next Wednesday, yes. Yeah, yeah i got to be on that show. And then yeah. we're doing BYOB 100 this weekend. So Are you going to be on that one? I think I am, yeah. 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 I, I was wondering if it, there might be do, do some kind of combo or at least have guests go back, uh, hosts go back and forth. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to try it. So yeah. it'll, it'll all be good. That's two milestones there. I know that's huge, and we're at we're almost at ninety. So I've got about ten weeks to go till we're at hundred. Awesome! This fall has been nuts. So. I'm a okay. dead behind you guys at fifty six. <laughs> you'll you'll catch <laughs> you'll catch us quickly, I think. Um, well, we're going to change the home tech podcast a little bit too in the spring. So. Okay, here we go. Let's see. We're eighty nine, right? And we are September twenty seventh. This is the Home Tech Podcast show number 89, recorded on September 27th, 2012. I am your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live and commercial-free from the AverageGuy.tv studios here. And, and it's just incredible. We are having a string of good weather here, cool, cool mornings, warm afternoons, all the punishment that we went through this summer. It, it's made it worth it. It's been great. We record here in the studios, Bellevue, Nebraska, and we post the show each week with world-class show notes out at the Average Guy. TV. You can contact me or the show. Just send us an email, podcast at theaverageguy.tv. You can track me down on Twitter. That's just at Jay Collison, and appreciate it when you do send me messages on Twitter. I get more of those each week, so I appreciate that. Email as well. In fact, we'll talk a little bit about that later in the show. I got some emails this week. Very helpful. And uh, you can follow the show schedule uh, on our Twitter account at the Average Guy TV. As well as you can catch all the videos on demand out at theaverageguy.tv. So if you want to download them to your Zoom or iTunes, Stitcher, those, well, Stitcher streaming. But any of those services, all the stuff to get that done is out there in the right-hand toolbar if you want to do it automatically. All right, kind of a thin show. We took last week off, and I appreciate you letting me do that. I was thinking about doing some kind of uh, best of show, and my life has just been so nuts lately that I, there is just no way I can get that done. So we just took a week off, and I appreciate you letting me do that. I came back this week. A couple of the guys, Christian and Andrew, are both out. I tried to finagle John Zadler, and he couldn't make it either, but I did find Mike Howard from JPEG to Raw. Mike, thanks for coming on. Hey, Jim. We're having great weather here, too. Highs in the, up in the low 70s. I mean, it's just beautiful. Oh, I love it's this, so nice. Love yeah. this time of year. Yeah, it's good. Fall is on its way. The leaves are changing, and, and it's good. I uh, We just had such a blistering hot summer, and you know I run a lot, and it just made it difficult to run. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a good hot weather, hot weather, hot weather runner. There we go. And uh, and so it's I am I am my my uh, mood has instantly picked up uh, since since then. Hey, uh, tell me a little bit about. I know we did some cross uh, cross platform promotion, gave away a Drobo, those gave kinds of Drobo, things. Yes. I haven't really haven't had you back on the show since then. How are things over at JPEG to Raw? Uh, things are things are cranking. We uh, you know we have guests each week. Uh, had an exciting show this past week with uh, Jared Pollan from Frono's Photos. I even still have my Afro wig that I, nice. I, I put it on completely, but it, you know you get the idea. 
That dude uh, had a serious. I mean, that was his hair, right? I mean, it, it is his hair, and there's okay. a story behind it where he grew up because his mother was dying from cancer, and he was going to, uh, you know, she was going through chemo, and he was going to use his hair to to help her, you know, shave his head, and then she could have the hair um, type thing as to make a wig. And it ultimately didn't work out for him because she passed away. But you know that's mm. the story behind his hair, and he's not—he mm-hmm. hasn't let it go. We we wore that in honor of him. But it made it made for an exciting show. And uh, we, you know, you're on show number eighty nine with one hundred coming up, not too far away. We're a little behind at fifty six, but um, we're doing good. You know what? I forgot to start the recording, Mike. So we need to start all over. I think we're going to start from the beginning. <laughs> I just don't want to. I don't want to mess with that and monkey with it. Hey, and we're, we're not we're not far enough along in the yeah. show that we can we can't. If Tim's out there, if you can just tell me everything I just said back, you know, or I'll improve yeah. on it. <laughs> Tim, you have any any pointers for us as we get to start we the do? show over again? <laughs> uh, Tim said if his bandwidth was better, we we I don't we got to raise some money or something for Tim to get him. I tried talking to him the other day, and it's just it's just so hard to to do that. Tim, I'd love to have you in the rotation. It'd be great to have you on. We just got to get what you. What he needs is better. like a giant phone that has. Uh, <laughs> You know, I wonder if that would help. Yeah, you can use its bandwidth. Tim, I'm sure you don't have Rock and 4G in your area, right? Is that LTE or or Mike? Is that no LTE? This is, is it LTE. Yeah. Okay. Actually, uh, AT and T has finally killed the SIM, so it's Wi-Fi only now. Okay. All right. Well, hey, yeah. even that, even that, uh, it won't help Tim since bad. his uh, since his yeah. wire, his internet's the problem. I tried using. Uh, Shoot, let's use my phone here. Um, I tried using. We're going to restart the show here in just a second. Hang tight for me one second. It's kind of my show, and I can do it if I want to. <laughs> um, I used an application called um, where is it for Sprint, and I think they're blocking it. It's supposed to turn your. It, it's you know one of those tethering apps. Uh, one second. Oh, this one has the tethering built in. Yeah, Sprint blocks tethering. Because they want to, they want to charge. It's called FoxFi. Did you see Sprint on? I, I can't remember when it, it's coming. Sometime in November, I think it is. Maybe October. Is having a one day sale Galaxy S three for fifty bucks. When? Uh, I have to find that link for you again. So one Boy, day. Only. Sarah would love to get in on that. One for sure, only. she wants to ditch that iPhone just as fast as she can. So, okay, let's try this again. Sorry about that. I was just, as we were getting on, I'm like, oh, I forgot to hit record. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff going on. And if you're, if, you, uh, if you're just joining us, I've done about 400 podcasts in the last two years, but I, I always forget to turn the recording on. All right, here we go. This is the Home Tech Podcast show number 89, recorded for September 27th, 2012. I am your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live and commercial-free from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Bellevue, Nebraska, and posted each week with world-class show notes out at the AverageGuy.tv. You can contact me or the show podcast at the AverageGuy.tv. Track me down on Twitter. That's just at Jay Collison. Follow the show schedule on our Twitter account. That's where I post what time we're starting. I, I, I try to start the show Eight o'clock promptly every Thursday night, uh, eight o'clock Easter. I'm sorry, eight o'clock Central. Uh, but uh, if I do make a, sh- a show change, that's the one you want to follow at the Average Guy TV. We've gotten a couple letters. I'm going to talk about them a little bit later in the show. Appreciate you sending us emails, and uh, it's always nice to get some feedback from you guys, uh, especially around the Know It guides that we've been putting out there. So I appreciate those. We'll talk about it. A little bit later. Okay, Andrew is out. Christian is out. Uh, I asked John Zadler if he'd be on, and John couldn't make it tonight either. It seems like everybody's busy on a Thursday night. But uh, old faithful Mike Howard from JPEG to Raw, who I gave him about, well, I gave you a day's notice, right, Mike? Yeah, you did. You okay, did. so asked him to come in, and he agreed. And Mike, how are you? Doing great. Uh, you know, uh, this time of year is my favorite. I love the fall. Yeah. Having great weather here, too. It's good. good time for, for, for photographers to get out and take some uh, fall colors. Yeah, and and uh, Mike, we were in Branson, Missouri, uh, a couple falls back, and that area of Missouri is just—I I don't know if, mm-hmm. if Georgia gets like this, but but Missouri just lights on fire, and it's just gorgeous down there. The different colors. Yeah, I, I love this time. Not only the colors, but the the weather itself. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we haven't uh, we haven't talked in a while on the podcast. Last time uh, you were on the show, we were giving things away. Drobo, what's going on over at uh, JPEG to Raw? 
Yeah, we're still cranking along. We're on show number 56, so we're a little bit behind you at 89. Um, but right now, we're actually doing a giveaway. We're giving away. Oh, nice. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. Yep, yep. No, it's in there. It's, it's in a there. Wacom Intuos 4 t pen tablet. It's mainly for, you know, you can use it for graphic artists, um, but also for photo editing. It's, it's a very good tool for photo editing. So JPEG to RAW is giving that away right now. We try and we try and do that. You know, just like computers, uh, things in photography, nothing in photography is f cheap. Everything's no. expensive. No. And it seems like every time you turn around, you need something else. So it's our way of trying to help out a little bit with, the, with our listeners. Yeah. I just, there was like a dog barking behind me, and we don't have a dog. That was uh, the... It must it's, be on TV or something. It's not the sound effects that I was playing <laughs> no, earlier. No, it's not. Um, I just uh, I was uh, on Facebook, and my son, who my middle son, is an art uh, student down at the Kansas City Art Institute, and he just picked up a big tablet like that. I don't know. I didn't. I was going to ask him what uh, which one he picked up. He paid quite. You know, it for for art school, they absolutely have to have a really nice one. So absolutely, this one. is the small. They have a medium, a large, and I think an extra large. If you're going to be doing a lot of graphic artist stuff, like your son, probably you'd want either the medium or maybe all the way up to the extra large. But what's what's the retail on that then? This thing is about 120. I think when you get to the medium, and somewhere in the 200s, and then the large is is probably over 300. Okay, and uh, you, how how would somebody win that thing if they w wanted to win it? The, you can either go to our site jpegdaraw dot com and there's a link there. It says you know Wacom giveaway, or go to our Facebook page. Um, you know, uh, just search for JPEG to Raw, and there's a giveaway link there on our Facebook page. When are you giving it away? Uh, the end of October. Okay, so you cool. still got plenty of time. Oh yeah, so head out there, JPEG to Raw, of course. Part of the uh, the big uh, uh, home server show community that we're all part of, and so you can get out there and uh, and get that done. Speaking of home server show, the meetup is coming. It's it's. Uh, I was just looking. I'm, I've got a countdown. I've got a counter on my site, and I think we're down. We're under 30 days, right? It's October 20th. And uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana, and uh, Dave is starting to make preparations for that. I haven't. Uh, I missed the home server show last night. I've just been really crazy busy with work, and I couldn't make the show last night. Uh, so I don't know if we've if we've found the place yet. But we are trying to get folks to register. If you want to join us for the meetup, it's a Saturday. It's going to be all day Saturday, or like 10 to 4 Saturday up in, in northern Indianapolis. Open to anybody. Um, we're going to have a bunch of equipment there. A bunch of guys are coming in. Uh, uh, Rennie says 22 days. Thanks, Rennie. And um, uh, we'll have a bunch of equipment there. We're going to have some sessions. Um, we're going to have the tablet that I'm going to talk about here in a second, so you can come out and try Windows 8 uh, Touch, and you're going to, after I get done with my little demo, you're going to want to be there because this thing is pretty sweet. And um, and just a good time for folks to get together and kind of uh, and talk tech and we'll eat a bunch of pizza and we'll be giving away it. I think we're giving away a Drobo and we're giving away some other stuff. So nice. uh, check that out. Homeservershow.com would be the place to go for all that information if you have any questions on it or you want to speak at it. If you want to come out and speak at it, just send me an email and you can do that podcast at TheAverageGuy.tv. All right, Mike, I know you got some camera stuff to talk about. I want to dive in a little bit to Windows 8 first, if that's oh, okay. Oh, yeah, let's do that I, first. I think we've got some really cool things to talk about with Windows 8. Um, I want to get a little backstory from you, though, first, because uh, you and I uh, have been going back and forth on Windows 8 over the last couple months. Yep. Uh, we've both been working a lot with it. I think I've, I might, in the community, I might be, I might have had it the longest on actually equipment. I put it on very first thing and became a fanboy right away and started saying, hey, you guys should be doing this. This is great. And everybody, eh, eh. and you were pretty skeptical. I mean, I remember at first. I still am, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I like that healthy skepticism, right? It keeps us fanboys. Um, in check. By the way, if you're watching the YouTube video of this, if you just look down in the bottom of the screen, you'll see Windows 8 running down there. So if you haven't seen it running yet, we're going to do some big demos with it. But it's it's running down there. Mike, you've done some things though. What what have you done to kind of to to get familiar in the Windows 8 environment? And we have it because we all have TechNet subscriptions, and the RTM version is available on TechNet for testing. But you know, the first thing I did is I ran it in a VM, and I did not run it full screen, and that was a mistake. Not running it full screen in a VM is like the worst possible scenario you can have to test it out. Yeah, it's not good. So that, right off the bat, I hated the thing. Then I ran it in a VM full screen, and that did help it out. It did run a lot better that way. I, re I started to like it a little bit more. Um, and then I've gone a step further. Is my wife needed a new computer, and I decided, you know, what the heck? I'm gonna, if I'm going to put new, uh, if I'm going to build a new computer and put a new operating system and everything on there, I'm going to put Windows 8. So I put Windows 8, and one of the things I love about Windows 8, it comes w with Hyper-V built into it. 
if you ever use Hyper-V uh, on Windows Server 2003, it's a virtualization where you can run, you know, basically a fake computer on there. And what I did is I took her old Windows 7 machine and made it a machine in Hyper-V. So she had everything she had before. She can get to that. She didn't lose anything. And yet now she has Windows 8. So she's been running that way for, uh, I guess it's been two or three weeks now, maybe, with Windows 8. And so I have a few uh, observations. One is, as I've slowly taken all her programs that she had, you know, iTunes and Outlook Calendar, only the calendar. She has a special mail program. I've taken them and installed them on Windows 8, so she doesn't have to go back into Windows 7. She's going back into Windows 7 very, very little. Mm. So she's doing almost everything on Windows 8. Um, on the other hand, she sees absolutely no use for the, the tiles, the Metro interface. Yeah. And she's she, on a laptop or a desktop? Desktop. So okay. she spends yeah. all of her time in, on the desktop. Now, at first, she hated the no start button. But, yeah. you know, she doesn't run as many apps, different apps as I do. She may have, you know, um, Chrome and Internet Explorer and then maybe three or four other programs that she is her main programs. So all we had to do was, ta you know, um, what do you do that? You... Um, Pin them to the taskbar. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pin those to the taskbar, and then at that point, the start button really is mute. You don't really need the start button. No, you really don't. And um, so now she can get to those there. And for her, there's not a whole lot of difference between Windows 7 and Windows 8. She could care less about Hyper-V, care less about how awesome the new task manager is. Or how um, fast, how much faster it is. How much? Did you well, give her SSD? I gave her a much more powerful CPU, more mm -hmm. RAM, SSD. So I'm trying to fool her with the fact that Windows 7, Windows 8 is faster. Yeah. She does enjoy that. So for now, I think, you know, while I thought she would revolt and I would have an issue, uh, it's, it's a non-event now for her. Windows 8 is fine. She just she doesn't have any need for the Metro interface. And I've said before, as a business, you know, I would want to have a way to disable Metro. I, 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 you know, for a desktop, sure. For tablet and what you about to show us there, absolutely, I'd want Metro. For the for a, uh, a desktop, I don't see a big use from a company commercial standpoint. Yeah, yeah. I, I no, I don't. I don't disagree with you on that. I, I, I think. Well, uh, I sent. I put it. I put an article in the in the show notes. And basically, the gist of it was, um, you know, that uh, if Windows 8 fails, Microsoft won't die. And we've talked about this before. And you and I have even kind of talked about what failure means. And so, if mm -hmm. you want to hear that, go back a couple podcasts. But um, I, I really think this is a, a calculated risk that they're taking, and I think it's at a good time. Windows 7 is still making its way into the enterprise, still, right? I mean, we're still yeah. moving. You guys still have XP machines. We do. We're about and half so, and half. Yeah, and so a, a good number of enterprises, including the government, is still in Windows XP. And, uh, and so Windows 7, it, doesn't make it wouldn't make sense for a lot of people to move to Windows 8. So I think Microsoft forcing this out there and saying, you know what, we're not going to give you the start button back. You are going to have the Metro screen, and you're going to get used to it. And you're going to, and what it will do is force some developers to start thinking about uh, Metro style apps, and and really getting those uh, and getting that ecosystem going. So I'm all for it because I want those apps. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. It's the, the the we get we seem to get more um, apps all the time in the App Store, and there's quite a few in there, and there'll be more at launch when on October 26th, but. Um, I, I want the developers to be motivated to write Metro apps because we know this is going to be, this is the wave of the future, right? I mean, I think the iPad has, has shown us that. It's going to be, you know, mobile um, computing. Well, what I hope they do is, is, you know, as you get the Metro, and I'm going to still call it Metro. Yeah, I'm, me too. As you get Metro on a desktop, on, a, on the tablet, on the phone, and uh, I guess it's coming to the Xbox 360 too, as you get it on all these devices and it, it has a similar look, I really hope they build the the uh, ecosystem there that things can move between them. So let's say you're you're driving home and you've got your phone and you listen to a song on there. You pause it when you come into the house, be able to pick it back up at that same place on your Xbox, and you know continue that song. And then maybe on, on your tablet you can continue it there. As long as you have the same account on all three on all of those devices, I would love to be able to pick them up and keep going with it yeah. like that. Yeah. Where you know where I worry about that is we have. Uh, three Xbox 360s in the house and I would love to be able to st rent a movie from one Xbox 360 and then as I eh, we're getting tired let's mm -hmm. go to bed pause it go up to the 
to the um, the bedroom and pick it back up there. Yep. You, can, you can't yeah. do it. Not, not today. I, I, I imagine that's coming. I mean, that's a Kindle feature, right, with Whisper yeah. Sync and some of those things. So. And I if they do that, come. then the this whole Metro interface, I think, uh, the Metro interface combined with that ecosystem will be just awesome. Yeah. Well, and Tim made a comment in chat that he doesn't think Metro is ready for the enterprise. And I, and I agree. It's not. I don't think they intend it to be, to be honest with you. This is a consumer offering. Um, everything I hear from the back end guys through the MVP community is that the tools to, that are coming to manage uh, both RT and Windows 8 Pro in the in those settings. Well, the Windows 8 Pro is a no brainer because it's got Windows. It's it's basic. I mean, it's got a lot of the same Windows 7 components in it. But a lot of the tools that are coming for RT to manage RT tablets will come in the next version. So. I don't think enterprises are going to be super fast to adopt those anyway. So there's going to be some early adopters. Um, depending on the price, there's going to be people. You know, I, I th I'm really hoping they come out with a very with a very attractive price to get some folks to buy these things for Christmas. And it'll be. It'll, we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, we've had this. We've talked about this on and off for the last few weeks. So I don't want to beat that point to uh, to death too much. But I do want to. I was Mike. I was. Uh, it was great to kind of follow your progress with your wife because I did the same thing with mine and we don't even she doesn't even ask me questions anymore and I and the gal I had upgraded a family member to well not to Windows 8 I put an SSD drive in and that's working pretty well she'll be out she'll be ready to go to Windows 8 when it comes out so I think I think I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna go back to the prediction you made yep. when we talked about failure and I'm gonna say it's not gonna be an overwhelming success I, I don't think it's going to be as big of a failure if we're talking numbers, right? I don't think it's going to be as big of a failure as everybody's predicting. I, because they're going to roll out new PCs with it. They're going to roll. There's some tablets that are going to get sold. You know, I, I think it will get on some devices. Here, for sure. Here's the okay. So here's another problem to, for them to overcome. So they're they're very being very bold, and I like that about Microsoft. They're being yeah, bold with this. Yeah, I do. Me too. So they they have a couple of challenge. They have a number of challenges, and one of them is they. For whatever reason, for a long time now, they've been absolutely horrible at marketing. Yeah. So really, the thing you're about to show here with, with the thing you have behind us, you know, that you, they should almost press record here and use this <laughs> as a commercial. Because uh, you it, what you're about to do is going to be better yeah. than what they're going to pay well, millions right. of dollars for advertising. Because I think if they can, if, you know, why aren't they advertising right now? For the RT tablet. Yeah. When is it going on sale? In October 26th? October 26th. That goes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They should be pounding the airwaves and building up a... Um, pre-orders. A, a pre-orders and getting yeah. that stuff going. Pricing and, and pre-orders. And, and you just not hear that. anything about yeah. it. And I, just, I worry from that standpoint on whether they're going to do the right marketing. And by the way, I've got two of those RT tablets coming. Do you? Yes. I, That's from, so from work. From work. Okay, right. For work, yeah. Yeah. I told the IT well, guys, if any of my friends get one before me, you're fired. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's it's good to be the director. Um, well, we're gonna. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna do a little bit of demo on this, and, uh, and and so some folks will get to see it. This is really cool. So let me, let me back up a little bit. And I was hoping to have next last weekend. I wrote like four posts, and I only got one of them actually posted. But so I still need to finish this. But. Uh, right before, uh, so last week I had the week off. I was in Madison, Wisconsin, doing some work, and I just couldn't get. It was just I was gone. But the Tuesday before I left, I picked up. I found on Craigslist, and I think I talked about this on the home server show, maybe even my show. I picked up a, a two hundred dollar uh, HP Touch Smart three ten, and I think they made the th uh, three hundred series and the six hundred series. And I think the 600 series were 22-inch screens and a little bit of faster processor, and the 300 series were 20-inch screens and uh, and uh, slower processors. But so the one I picked up is a 20-inch screen. It's got four gig of RAM, had a 750 gig hard drive in it, uh, DVD drive. It's basically the all-in-one PC that was shipped, but has Windows 7 on it, and it's worthless with Windows 7. I mean, it's just the Windows 7 has some touch features, but not not really worth um, not really worth investing in or using because it's just Windows 7 is not built that way. Although now that I've been working on Windows 8, I might I might actually think twice about that. Um, so this is the 300 or the 600. This is the 300. So it's a okay. 20 inch it's a 20 inch touch screen. But my thought was, and actually Kevin Schoonover gave me this, gave me this idea was to to go out and, and track down on e Craigslist, eBay, whatever, uh, some of these touch smart devices because people don't know what they have. 
And so sure enough, here in Omaha, I found this for 200 bucks. So that Tuesday, I picked it up, and then I was gone all week, and it was just murder because I so wanted to... Um, I so wanted to get this device set up, and I, it was too big. I couldn't take it with me. There's no way I was going to get it back on the plane. Um, so it sat. And so last weekend, I spent, oh, a couple hours installing Windows 8 on it and getting it up and running. And it really has created a gigantic uh, Surface tablet or just a Surface device for me. Um, I use it. I do have a keyboard with it, but I have completely taken the mouse off. So... I haven't used a mouse on this thing in two weeks because it's totally touchscreen. So I'm going to flip over to the. Uh, I'm going to flip that over, it, guys in chat. If you can let me know if if you're seeing the desktop, that would be, that would be great. Certainly this desktop isn't new, and this is the device actually. If you're if you're watching my screen, it's right behind me. They're good. Okay. So this is a tablet, and and it it really is uh, touching it now. Really changes the equation. And Mike, one of the big differences for me, and I thought at first maybe the touchscreen was broken, um, because you and I both know when you put Windows 8 on a desktop to get the start menu to pop back up, you t you drag the mouse all the way to the bottom right hand corner of the screen, mm -hmm. right? And it the start menu. Well, that that's not how you do it with touch. So okay. you, you take your hand and you bring it over to the the side UI to the left. And you drag that window out so you can see how I, I pulled that out. Now, that's pulling out the last program that I ran. And then you just push that back, and out comes the start, you know, the menu. In this case, these are all the applications that I'm currently running. So um, if I decided to say I was, in, uh, I was in Chrome, right, this is a desktop, and you're seeing me, you're actually seeing the broadcast because we're, we're doing that. So if I wanted to go back to the desktop, I'm going to pull that out and push it over. And then I'm going to push the start menu down there, and you can see that goes right back. So That's really responsive, too. Is that, it is. Is that, is that good? Uh, what kind of hardware is inside of HP? It's a, oh, shoot. Core i3? Core it, no, i5? no, no. It's even, it's even slower than that. Um, well, let me, let me see if I can that pull that. That's very responsive. Yeah, you know, and I don't even think it has, um, I don't even think I have the correct drivers loaded for it yet. Um, it, because I'm only getting two points of touch, and I should okay. be getting all five. That's what I was about to ask you, is it multi-touch? Yeah. Because I'm so looking I, right now on, on Craigslist, and the cheapest I can find is $400. Yeah, and, and this thing retailed new. Uh, this thing retailed for, for 675 or 650 or something like that. It is an AMD Athlon 2 times 2 uh, 245e, so it runs at 2.9 gigahertz. Okay. And it's got, uh, let's see if I, it's got an a, uh, um, an ATI uh, Radeon HD 4270 video card in there, and I think it, uh, uh, it's got gigaram for it in there. So it was manufactured in February of, of uh, 2011, so it's about 18 months old, 16 months old, something like that, 18, 16, 17, 18 months old. So it's not terribly old either. And for, you know, we know for Windows 8 you don't need that much, um, you really don't need that much hardware to get this thing running. So, so that was for me for Windows 8, that was, uh, my, my heart just sunk because I was, I was coming down here to the corner trying to get things to go, yeah. and nothing was working right. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> it's not going to work. And so I realized, no, you just got to pull that. And you can kind of see me do it on the screen. Push that back, and then I can, get, I can get to any of the apps that I have there. And then, of course, the side UI on the, on the, um, on the left side or on the right side is you just pull out, and you get settings, devices, start, share. You know, you get this, the same kind of things you're getting in Windows 8. That's... That's really nothing new um, that's in there. The nice thing is then everything works from a, you know, as you're moving the screen back and forth, that all works. I can make those by spreading them. I can make them, I can make them larger or I can make them smaller just with a two, with a two finger gesture on the screen, which is kind of nice. cool. Right? So you're seeing that's one of the cool things on this, of course, and this is how I, I was testing the, <laughs> the, um, how, how many points, right? And this what at first I thought, okay, so how am I going to know, right? I, I tried putting my fingers on it. So there's a paint, um, there is a paint program that comes with Windows. And in this case, you can, uh, let's see, hold on, there we go. So you can see then I'm, I'm drawing with one finger, and now I can do the two finger right there. Mm -hmm. But it will not do... I, the one finger salute. No, just kidding. It won't do the three. It won't do three. It's limited it to two. two. Yeah. So that makes me think at this point maybe I don't have the the you know the, the drivers, drivers loaded correctly because I we looked it up in advance and um, in this so in that particular in this program so I need it here. I'll push that back up. 
uh, hold on, let me tap it there. So you can see on the screen, right, I, uh, I've got the paint on there. And so really, it's now the controls are on the top, which you'd think. this It takes you a second. You're like, I'm going to find them either on the top or the bottom, probably. So I pull that down, and you can see it just pulls those paint in the bottom piece. And I, I can change the brush or the width. I can clear the screen if I want to um, and do it that way. So um, pretty uh, – so in this point, right, I've got just a – I've got kind of a blank screen, right? You're just seeing a blank screen. If I want to get back to the programs that are running in the background. Now, you never really have to close applications. Yeah, I was about to ask eight. you about that. You don't have to. It'll manage those for you. Okay. One of the questions you had had is, hey, how do I get rid of these things, right, if I yeah. want to close them? Because you're used to closing out applications. Because the, fir the first thing in Metro that I decided to show my wife was, hey, let's look at the camera thing. So she, pre she didn't press it. I, I'm acting like you now with her mouse. She, she <laughs> right, clicked on right, the camera right. thing, and sure enough, her face comes full screen, you know, because her video camera comes on. And, she, of course, she didn't like that, so she goes to close it, and the, I could tell the webcam was still on. So we could not figure out how do we turn this, thing, this program off. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's running over here, right? So I pull that out, uh, and there's all the programs. You see – oh, can you, can you guys see those? Yeah, you can see yeah. them on the left. Um, and so there's what's, those are the ones that are running in there. And, and so I'm going to go – I'm going to – just go to the people hub so i'm going to select that and those are the folks that i know that are my people hub if i want to get rid of it i just grab it at the top pull it down whoops i got to get the right motion for that I think no maybe hold on this is the one and then i want been. you to tell me how we do this without a touch screen oh hold on let me try this one there it goes. Okay, so i'm in my pictures library. I don't know why that wasn't working on the people hub, but hmm. you grab it, pull it down. And then take it to the bottom like that and okay. pull it off, and it's gone, and it closes it. And you see it comes back to... Huh. How would you do that with a uh, mouse? I think Same way? you take the mouse to the top, and it'll give you a little hand. Okay. And then you just pull, you just drag that down. I'd have to, I'd have to test that. I think that's All how right. you do it. I'll try that. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, these, these apps that are running in the background, again, so I have AccuWeather, and I can just I'll pull that one up here. Maybe I did. One of the things I have noticed is it's not. Sometimes I click it and I didn't hit it solidly enough, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. It so that could it, be the, the actual touch interface. Yeah, yeah. And not Windows. 8. Could be the drivers. Could be yeah. whatever. Again, I'm I'm doing this on a device that's that. Um, and then and just pull that down, and you see it minimizes it. Take it all the way to the bottom, and just close it, and it, and it brings it back. So. Um, you can leave those open. It will automatically then close those for you as you're not using them. It'll start closing them out based on its needs. So uh, I've got some. I've got some things there. Now the I know are that cool too. I, I, go ahead. Uh, yeah. We'll go no. Back. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know that um, they want you to integrate with SkyDrive and uh, their email and all that kind of stuff. But what if you're more of a Google person and you have you know Gmail and and um, Dropbox, not, not that that's Google, but and then their Drive, Google Drive. Will all that integrate well too? Yeah, you know, I haven't tried it yet, but it'll it'll work as well. You just can flip over to the desktop, so you can see there. I like to use Chrome, so I'm just gonna I, I'm gonna use Chrome. In this case, I'm gonna pop over it well, and I've got this open. Let me minimize that. So you can see the the Google, you know, the Google Space that I'm here. If I wanted to, so no mouse again, right? So I'm in Windows Seven with no mouse. This is what makes me question. Like, could, would me not Windows using 8. this on Windows 7, right? You know, no, I'm saying it's oh. like when I first got this, I thought, oh, Windows 7 and touch would be junk. But now that I'm using it uh, here, it's the same interface, right? I'm still yeah. on the desktop and I like it. So, um, so in this case, uh, let's go to the mail. Uh, there's mail right there. So I'm just going to touch that and it's going to go to the, it's going to load my mail. And, um, and there, you know, and I could, uh, I could go through this. It's taking its time. Um, probably because I've got this video going on, but yeah. um, let me close that out. But you can see this interface isn't that bad for touch. I mean, mm -hmm. I am I am doing some stuff right here that um, you can really replace uh, the mouse use. Oh, you know what? This is an account that I don't use email for. That's why there's no mm -hmm. email in there. Yeah, I th I think I'm done with the mouse on this thing. W Windows Seven or Windows Eight, I would I would probably use a keyboard and then just. Kind of touch, especially like Google is is pretty nice. You would ask me, I haven't installed a, the Google Drive or any of those things okay. yet, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. One that. thing, I, it, do you have that at a slight angle? I do. Okay. Yeah. And one thing I've I've worried about with having touch at a um, not on a tablet is you know when you have it on a screen like that, 
is having to reach out and touch all that time does your hand does your arm eventually get tired because you know when you're sitting here typing or even with the mouse your your arms are at rest if you're spending hours having to interface with it like that um yeah. and i guess yeah. i don't know what you do for hours touching it but if you had to that seemed like that would get tiring um thanks Randy. Randy sent me an email i felt so bad that my email account had no emails in there that <laughs> did he send, send it to me. the right one how do you know which it's, one to send it it's to? actually jim at the average guy dot tv so that's okay. what you have to send it to that's it's one it's an account i use i just never even check but <laughs> yeah no i haven't integrated that in at all uh, mike some of those pieces but but you're right SkyDrive is integrated in there so i can pop that open if i want and and get to the files that i have um, on my SkyDrive, this is kind of what that looks like. If I've got some music in there, and uh, if it brings in album art now, so you can start, you can go in there and and uh, again, every once in a while on this touch screen, I it it takes twice, and uh, so yeah. I, I think I need to find. You know what'll happen is ATI will release drivers oh probably in three weeks that are for Windows 8. Yeah. So right now they're not out there. I I haven't checked in two weeks, so I wouldn't know. Um, well, you know, my wife's old computer is, uh, it's a decent CPU. It's a, a you know, AMD uh, dual core, three gigahertz computer sitting right behind me. And I have a feeling I'm going to, now that she's fully up and running with no problems, because uh, I generally install a new system on a new hard drive. So I have the old hard drive in case something terribly went wrong. I can always, you know, your old stuff is still there. But I think now that we're good, I'm going to take her older hardware and put Windows 8 on it and have it down here for me as a, um, as a, a test, you know, play, yeah, play yeah, thing. some some hardware doesn't that. have that. Yeah, I'm telling you, Mike, you got to get a touch. I got to keep it's, watching. Uh, um, so I told Sarah when I bought this, she yeah. can't hear me. So I told her when I bought this, I was going to sell this thing as soon as I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to take it to the meetup and when I bring it back, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to have a hard time letting it go. It I is a you. nice. Um, oh, oh, I was showing you earlier. Let's just this one of the other cool things about this. Let's go back to Chrome for a second. And let me go to the Hangout here. And you can see, uh, if I turn the camera on, um, you should see, oh, because I have to turn screen sharing off. So let me turn that off. So here's the, I need to pull this over. I, I was very tempted to actually use, and the, the light behind me is causing some, some glare problems. Yeah. And, and you're kind of getting an old retro shot of the basement back. Right? We are, Remember yes. When, when I used to podcast from the basement. So... You can. This is coming from the camera up there, and if I turn that light off, it'd probably be better. But it's got it's got a pretty nice camera. So imagine this isn't a tablet, right? And I'm, and I've got this set up in its stand, and I'm doing video conferencing uh, on this. It 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 actually works pretty well. No, that is that is really good. You know, as your head starts to block some of that light, yeah, you, the quality of it gets, uh, you know, the quality is not bad at all. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, not now, not. Go so ahead. this is the 300 series, and you said you got it for 200. But if one of us are, I can't find it for that in my area. And you know, Craigslist is uh, local. So, what what would be a good price for something like that outside of 200 dollars? Uh, for the for the 300, for the three and the 600. Let's you know, I'm looking through there, and there's some people selling 600, some people selling 300s. Yeah, I think if you can get a 300 anywhere between two and three, I, that okay. I wasn't going to go any more than two. Just to be honest, I was okay. like. I need to do this, and I kind of need to do it on the cheap, and um, and so that was the price I had set. I think for a six hundred, you know, you could probably go as high as four um, for that. I don't know. Look, I don't know whatever you're willing to kind of part part with, right? I mean, but but even after, so this is where I've changed my mind. Even after Windows eight launches, I mean, my thought was, well, I'll get a tablet. Well, this thing kind of works well as a PC. I mean. There's a lot of I've been doing some things on it. So so for example, let's let's talk about the email real quick. So let me let me go into the email. And I probably shouldn't do this because I'm gonna be putting things out there I probably shouldn't be showing. But oh, email's open, so let me let me pull that You can get all those uh emails from Nigerian princes and that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So in this case, uh so I got my keyboard, um, and this is where having a mic on a on a stand uh, really kinda helps. So um, let's uh, let's go down here. I know I pulled some into my account, so let's pull those in. So you see, I'm just really just touching the screen, and I'm getting exclusive offers from Fab. I have no idea how I got on Fab.com, but that, but that's okay. And I think in this case, um, let me. Is there a way? Let's see. Oh, so I'm going to select it and then just delete it. 
um, that's a pretty for me that's a pretty fast way to to roll through these things right so I'm going to select it and delete it and I don't want to delete that one so it it Mike you, you talk about using the touch for it I um, I don't think my hand's going to be up there that long enough where it's going to be a big deal about uh, about touching it. Yeah. You know, I can just kind of keep just kind of I'm going to roll through these. I this account gets, you know, pretty bad email. It's kind of my spam account. If I wanted to create a new one, um this is where the keyboard would come in handy. So I'm going to go up there and and oh, did you see the keyboard come up? I did very quickly. Yeah, it went away. Me, yeah. So there's the keyboard on the bottom. Um, you can't see it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it'll be available uh, in the video as well. So there's the keyboard on the bottom too. And if I wanted to use that, I could put Mike Howard in there. And there, um, there you are. And um, I'm going to come up here and put a message in. Now I would never, I wouldn't type a key. I wouldn't type an email out to you this right, way unless right. I was saying yes or no or you know, whatever, but I might say, you know, I might come to my keyboard. And this is where I'm mocking up having that keyboard that comes with the Surface tablet. So mm -hmm. um, thanks for, you know, coming on the show, Mike. And uh, and then I'm just going to send that, and it's gone. And that, to me, that is an incredibly e efficient way of – you're not moving your mouse around, and, and you know, you're not having to find your mouse, especially multiple keyboards. Now – I have this on a single screen, so um, you know I don't know what that's going to be like when it gets multiple monitors. But now, you know, right? So um, it'd be interesting multiple mo monitors. I'm digging now, you, it. You you've had uh, Windows Seven on that before you put Windows Eight, right? Yes. And how how do you feel from a speed standpoint? Is um, is Windows Eight on par with Windows Seven as far as you know um, speed? Do you feel? I, I, I think know start startup is faster with Windows Eight. Yeah. It's very fast. But what about general use? Um, I think I think overall it's more efficient. I mean, I okay. just you see how I roll, especially with the Metro apps. I mean, those are supposed to be more efficient going in, and so you know, as I look at them, um, it, it's one of those, it's one of those things. Oh, we're not getting slower. I guess is what I'm saying. It's yeah. It's hard for me to judge my wife's computer because she got a much faster computer in the process. But I do, you know, even though it's an SSD. Uh, I have an SSD on this machine, and it has fairly fast boot up. But my wife's machine is 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 way faster than than this one. The Windows 8 is just booting, uh, you know, maybe in the order of twice as fast. Yeah, well, yeah, there's some trickery there, but I, I guess you know what I would say: apples to apples, seven to eight, you're going to get a speed increase with eight. And there's some trickery going on that makes it load faster, and some there's I don't some care efficiencies. As long as it makes me hey. <laughs> Uh, no, it, it, you know, perception is ninety nine percent truth, yeah, right? So if it's if, if it's perceiving it's going faster, I don't care. Trick me, yeah. <laughs> you know. It's it's not like I care. Um, oh, the other thing know. I did now that you got this up, which looks pretty cool. I I like that full screen weather thing. Yeah, uh, I, had, I gave my, I put some of the themes up for my wife. You know, oh, it's and I the whole trick. Those at all? It's the whole trickery thing there. So she woke up the next morning and had these beautiful themes on there. All part of my. Um, propaganda to get her to like it <laughs> <laughs> well you know you need some wife acceptance factor <laughs> and you know like you like you that. had said with your wife um you don't hear from her anymore about asking you questions or anything and i don't either you know i asked my wife how's it going with that and it's like what do you mean it's working yeah i mean she's not going to be as intrigued and, and digging into things as i am so for her it's, it's it's working it's you know the desktop is the desktop other Jim, it said typing on an iPad or an Android tablet is not easy, uh, and still be at at, ang at an angle to see. Oh yeah, because you're laying it down flat, and that's not a great. This is, and I've got it tilted. I don't know. It's tilted maybe like. Well, here's where's my camera. Maybe like that. All right. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the angle I have it tilted at. Um, I know you're you're having to look at the bottom of the screen for me because we still have Windows 8 in focus, but. Um, so this is actually for for the desktop. This is a very very comfortable angle for me to both see the screen, and I'm getting quite a bit of glare off it, to be honest with you, um, when I look directly at it. In fact, I tried taking some pictures of it this weekend as I was working with it, and I was always you could always mm -hmm. see me right in the in the camera. But uh, now that touch, I'm looking at one a new one here on Amazon, and does it have like a metal base coming down around the bottom? Yeah, it does, and so yep. you can you can it's turn it heavy at, too. You can yep. turn it at an angle, yeah, so you wouldn't you wouldn't carry this thing around. <laughs> I could get that 
I don't know if you could see how well. It's oh, that that moved back pretty good. Yeah, yeah. and then all the way, and then all the way forward. I wish it would get a little flatter, to be honest with you. Okay. If I could get it down, and I wish it swiveled like this, to be honest, right? It would mm -hmm. as, as you bring it, bring it down, bring it, bring it down. As you moved it down, it would go like this, right? And so you could get it completely flat if that's what you want. You know what? That would be awesome. And maybe in Windows eight, just in general, maybe a little bit smaller screen. But putting something like that in the kitchen, so I can yeah. see I can see my wife having, uh, you know, being on the internet with a cookbook thing or something, and you generally have the weather going or something like this. Um, yeah, yeah. Now this is can this is the Kansas City area, okay. which by the way is the closest Microsoft store that I'm visiting on October 13th. Awesome. But um, yeah, um, you get some, and, and on the YouTube it might be difficult to see, but this is. Um, you know, this is the weather app with the live weather. So Kevin Schoonover, who kind of turned me on to this idea, this is the, the premise was, hey, these things make a great computer for the kitchen. And because you're probably not oh, going to yeah. do work productivity on the computer in the kitchen. It's going to be to access OneNote. And how cool would it be to have your so your shopping list is in OneNote and you sync your, you know, you sync the OneNotes up across whatever. Right. And then mm -hmm. so in the kitchen, Sarah could be leaving notes for me, and then at the end of the day, I check the one note and say, "Do I need to pick up any? You know, do I need to pick up bread and milk?" Um, kind of on the way home. Uh, and you can see there, I I just pinched that down, two finger pinch, just brought that down to, and it'll take a while for all that to catch up. And YouTube's going to do some trickery as well, so you'll have to see some things. It's a lot faster in person than what's happening with screen sharing and some of those other yeah. things. Um, and we're doing a lot right now. The, the only problem is, Jim, if I got one of these and loved it down here, I wouldn't want to put it in the kitchen. No, you wouldn't. I, I didn't have to. This, I'd need another one. <laughs> this one's not going in the kitchen. I'm telling you for sure. <laughs> this is nice. And if it was 22 inches, uh, it would be even better. You know, I toyed with tonight um, putting it as exactly. my third monitor over here and actually using it to broadcast. I, did, I just mm. didn't get it done. So... Um, well, the other thing, you know, because uh, I'm running Windows 7 on both my, my desktop and my uh, broadcast server, is I was hesitant because I feel that a lot of Microsoft version 1 stuff is not stable. And you wait for Service Pack 1 to come out. Yeah. I did not do that with Windows 7 because I felt the, it was so solid to begin with. And from what I've seen so far with my wife's computer, while for whatever reason the beta and the... Uh, the RC candidate, the RC version, all seemed half done. For whatever reason, this version, uh, you know, my wife has not had any crashes, has not had really any problems. It's been pretty solid so far. Yeah, I'd agree. I agree. It's been a great, I, I haven't had any problems here. And I haven't messed with it full time. I, every second I get, I'm, you know, doing something with. And I, I haven't had a lot of time to load apps. But, but yeah, so far so good. Um, you know, it's, uh, you can kind of see there's a, uh, let's see if I can click this. I don't know what it's asking me to do here. So I'm still new to this, so I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see, turn that. Oh, that's kind of weird. Okay, so I got a little wheel that popped up asking me what I wanted to do. Let's just remove that. Oh, this is a OneNote? Yeah, this is OneNote, and I haven't quite messed around with it yet. So I'll need to, um... This you can see no, this is quite a bit different than the regular one note. This is syncing. How do I get rid of? Let's see. How do I get rid of the keyboard? I pushed this button right there. Maybe, maybe not. There it goes. Okay. Um, yeah, a little bit different. Um, this is syncing. There we go. Um, right now it's syncing. So it's the first time I've logged into it. So it's it's coming back. We used to keep the home server show notes on uh, on. Um, in OneNote, back, way back when, around show 100, and so you can see here. Here's my here's the shows in OneNote, right? Um, again, having a little touch problem. Just it, uh, the screen is not as I don't think it's going to be as responsive as the tablet screens are. Yeah, but and plus you said you didn't have the drivers loaded for it. Yeah. Now this this isn't how OneNote looked before for you, right? When you say before, what is that on the web? Uh, wait, I'm using OneNote. Um, it comes as part of Office. Yeah, so no, this is the OneNote. This is the MX. So this oh, okay. is the, the Metro version for Windows 8. Okay. Yeah. But even even there, so you can see not, not terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Not terrible. All the stuff that was uh, that was on my, um, uh, you know, I was on the SkyDrive before that was 
in sync is still there so pretty cool and then if I select the link it's gonna open that in the it, this is now this is Internet Explorer 10 and this is the Metro version of that. So there's two versions. There's a Metro version and there's a desktop version. I don't like this version. And this is the, yeah, I, I think this has got some work to do for sure. I, I don't like I, the full screen thing. It confuses me as to how to open up another window. Oh, so it says uh, if you turn on flip ahead, you can go ahead to the next page quickly by swiping across the page. Your browsing history will be sent to Microsoft to improve how flip ahead works. So it's doing some, it's doing some page caching ahead. Mm -hmm. Sounds like so. I'm going to turn that on. Um, whoa, that's wild! All right, so you just saw. I got to wait for it to do the page cache. Yeah, <laughs> well, I just I just flipped that. So we're, we got served. Um, I should probably be at the average guy dot TV. So you um, should be. Uh, let's get there. Okay, so you can see I just put in the, and it gave me the choice. The very first choice is the average guy dot TV. I do like that suggestion yeah, part yeah. about Internet Explorer 10. Yeah, so it seems to be. It weird. also looked like when you first hit it, some little icons came up. Were that like your favorites? No, those it those it's a smart search. So it's going back through stuff you've looked at in the past. It's trying okay. to make a guess for you. Hey, if you're putting this in, it's it's like the Google. Um, you know, when you're when when you're uh, typing in a, ser a Google search and it tries to make suggestions for you. Yeah. Sa same type of deal. Okay. So let's see. Uh, that works. I don't. I don't know. It's just a swipe. Is it that way? That looked familiar. That little uh, spreadsheet thing you had there. Yeah, the one for the cloud. I should yeah. just talk about that while I'm there, real quick. So let's just pop up here. We'll go into. Let me click cloud storage, and we'll talk about it while I've got it up. Um. Yeah. So if it. Oh, look at that. Oh. There we go. You see that? <laughs> to see how nice that yep. is. Holy yeah. cow! So do you that do the, in Windows Seven, you, my friend. You, you can do the <laughs> this whole show from a sharing of your Windows Eight desktop. Yeah, you know what? I mean, what would be great is if it was right here. You can't see that on the screen. Right. But if it was to, right to my right, and I was just doing this, right, I wouldn't have to turn. I put it here because I wanted you all to see the, yeah, the no, form factor good. and what it looks and, like. And you had mentioned that you may switch over your uh, broadcast server over to Windows Eight. Yeah, I haven't done that yet just because I haven't had time. But I think after this experiment, I think I'm ready. Mm -hmm. So um, although, I'm, you know, it's not a touch screen, and so I'm just not quite sure if that, you know. What I'm, advantages you get out yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. It works on Windows 7, and it's tested. Um, we had, let me just make a mention. So I've, I'm updating this uh, cloud, uh, cloud storage Know It guide. Um, we've changed over from survival guides to Know It, K-N-O-W, Know It. Or no IT. Those that we're, we're doing some themes with that. So if you go out to the average guy TV and look for the know it guides, they're over on the right hand side. We're building those out. And do I did want to do you spell gu guide? Um, yeah, G U Y because it's the know it guy. That's I bought yeah. uh, know it guy .com and the know it guy .com. And so yeah, it's kind of a play on the average guy. And now we're going to have some know it guides that uh, that kind of are a little more not necessarily for the advan or for the average guy, so to speak, for more of the tech folks that I attract. And so we're going to still try and hold on to the average guy brand, but these know it guides will be more for advanced uh, tech users and such. So if you haven't been out, take a peek at that. But I, I made some changes to it recently, and I've been adding more. I wanted to say thanks uh, to Rennie. Of course, a uh, faithful listener every week and, uh, and joins us. He had sent me some links uh, to, uh, to, for things to add to this. And actually, uh, I, I got told, Mike, I got totally ripped off, and I'm going to oh, show yeah, you how here in just a second. It's a great feeling when you get ripped now, off, did you, by the Did way. you add backblaze um, to this? I know we had talked about backblazes. Oh, no, I have not put those so in So I think you, you yeah. had talked about this because it's going to be like a living document almost that yes. you will update it as it goes along. Yeah, and, and Daniel Richter had sent me about six more services that that were that I had not caught. So Daniel, one, I appreciate you doing that. I'm, it takes me a little bit of time that getting the four. I do some research on them, and I, you know, you'll see there's a lot of information in this guide about each of the services, including some commentary. So it takes me, I don't know, probably 30 minutes per service. If it's if I know it, probably an hour per service. If I don't, because I'm digging in there a little bit trying to find those things this, that are that. This are is going to be the definitive guide on cloud storage. 
I think it. I think it could be. Yeah. To be honest with you, that's really what I'd like it to be. And then as 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 things get updated, I mean, the reason I put it here, Mike, is because people ask me questions about it all the time. Right? My sure. friends say, "Hey, what should I do?" Right? Uh, and uh, you and I hear this. You're, I know your friends do this too. Hey, I lost my pictures or my PC crashed, and I well, and you say, "Well, did you back it up?" It was stored you know, from your backup. Do you have a copy in the cloud? And uh, and so we. Um, uh, we we start. I started putting this together so we could refer it to our friends. So it is a living document for that reason. Uh, so I want to show you. So look at the. If, if you look in the screen again, look at the kind of the format I have here. So I've got this matrix up top that's got everything priced by size. So it's a really easy. Uh, it's a really easy way to look at it. Here I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. On look at that's just nice. This makes a nice podcasting, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then if as you come down, it'll say, do they have a desktop app, mobile app? Uh, where do your files reside? Because they don't always reside on your PC. Sometimes you have to just move them to the cloud, like in Amazon's case. Um, can I share them, the max file size, and then helpful links and comments, right? Okay, so look at that real quick. And uh, Mike, I know you want to ask a question. While you're asking that, I'm going to go, I'm going to bring up, let's see, how am I going to do this? And, and you know that the last part you said about does where do the files reside because that was a question somebody asked me about Dropbox, and at first I did not know, and it took me a little bit of, of research to find out with Dropbox it actually the files are on still on your computer right. They are, yeah. Dropbox so, they are, and I think that so if I have Dropbox here at my house and Dropbox at my office, what Dropbox is doing is syncing the two. Mm-hmm. And but they're also if, if but they're by also default, yeah. by default you can shut that off if right. you want. But by default, yeah. But uh, they are also on Dropbox themselves, aren't they? So like, let's yes. say if if I mm-hmm. were to if both computers were lost, they're still there in Dropbox. Or if I'm on my home computer and I've lost the internet connection, I can still get to those things because they're local. Right. Yep. Yeah. And Dropbox is good that way. You just you need to know where you're moving your files to. One of the disadvantages to Dropbox is if you say you have a laptop and you're on a metered connection yep. and you install Dropbox and all of a sudden, you know, you got ten gig of stuff in your Dropbox and, and it starts immediately syncing. So you have to be very, very careful about that. And that's why I'm trying to get as detailed as I can without getting too many details, right? No, I think uh, that's great to say where the sh- the files uh stored. Okay, so let me share my screen here, and uh, I will bring up the guys who uh, who have clearly ripped me off. Um, if uh, give me a second to to bring that up here, screen share is not working as well as I like to like it to, or maybe my mouse is not working. Okay, so uh, on let me let me on. Um, if we go over to the – so now I'm showing you kind of what they did, right? So you can kind of see there's box, and then next to it is name and free cloud storage and extra storage available and info, right? That's all That's all kind of right there. So look at that format, and then look at my format. Wait, who right. who who is that? So this is network – this is uh, so Rennie had sent me this link and said, "Hey, look at these guys, right? This is Network World, right? These are these are pretty big players out there." Yeah. And, and this post came out on September 25th. Okay, so so pretty recently, and uh, and again, look at uh, look at how it's set up, Mike. Look where the icons are in the upper right, uh-huh. the upper left hand corner, and see how there's kind of written information there. Okay, so that's them. That's Network World, right? And then okay, so then look at Jim's post. Um, Jim posted his on uh, originally on September 9th, so you know maybe two weeks before it. And uh, boy, there's their uh, their format looks an awful lot like mine. It sure does. I think they ripped me off. <laughs> <laughs> it means it means somebody from there is following you. Uh, maybe so. <laughs> so Network World, I appreciate. You could just give me a little credit for it. Although, you know, it's not that big of a deal because it's, it's, it would be an intuitive kind of thing. But it does look an awful lot like my post. Sure Anyways, does. Rennie, thanks for, uh, thanks for sending that over to me. Uh, he was like, oh, hey, here's some more. Um, you know, one of the things I don't like about this Network World post is they make you do that. They give you three, and then you got to go next to go to the next page, and then three and go next. Mm-hmm. If, you, uh, if you go to my page... 
they're all it's just they're all on one page you can just scroll through if you go down to the bottom I'm still converting from one version to another I, I set this up the first this is how you know it's living right so I set this up the first time and I didn't like I put it in boxes and yeah and and I didn't like it so I'm moving it to this new uh, kind of this to new the, look way it looks at the top yeah, yeah yeah so I go from this look here where it's kind of everything's in one you know you've got that well yeah like that and then that used to look like this, where everything was kind of in a matrix. Yeah. And that was not as easy to read or see, so I'm making some changes. So we'll continue. And in, in fact, I even I uploaded today to save my changes, and I put a little. I just copied the things I'm looking for at the very bottom. So you guys can see this is a ver very much a working document. If you have comments or you want to add suggestions to what we're doing, um, let me know. I'm in a really busy time, so I'm not as fast to update things as, as I've been in the past. And, and a little spreadsheet at the top is a little table at the top is is helpful too. Yeah, that. Well, I wanted you guys to be able to compare prices, um, mm -hmm. you know, across services, because that's what I honestly I would only do this if this is what I wanted for me. <laughs> it's not that I don't care about you guys, but I first care about me. So what I wanted to be able to do is say, okay, what's the cheapest cloud based? If I'm going to recommend this to somebody, what's the cheapest one uh, out there? And this sure. this spreadsheet lets you do that. All right, so here's the obvious question. So far, and this is a living document, so maybe your uh, opinion will change over time. But for you, what would you say is the what, – which one of these backup s solutions would you choose? Yeah, it's, that's a complex question because I'm going to actually choose one based on what I'm using it for based on price. Okay. So, if, so as an example, I'm moving all my music to the Amazon cloud. So okay. um, that's a choice I'm making, not necessarily based on price. So I pay 25 bucks a year to – to have almost unlimited songs up there. I can't, they give you like 250,000 and there's no way I'll have ever have that right. much music. Oh, so um, they base it upon song, not upon file size. Right, okay. yeah. So you get 250,000 curated songs. They'll, they'll, if it's the, if it's the original copy of it, they'll actually they'll actually improve the version of it. And so, if you uploaded it at 192, you can re-download it at 256. Wow, nice. which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. iTunes does the same thing. So, they're they're in Never a war there. iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I'm using uh, I use Dropbox for sharing uh, okay. and and almost no storage. It's it, because it shares so easy. Right, I mean, it's by far. I think it's by far one of the yeah, best platforms, and most people it. are on it, so it makes sense uh, to share on Dropbox. Uh, most of you guys know, if you listen to me on the Home Server Show, Walla has become my favorite, be only because they've grandfathered me in with 140 gig of space, which is I just got a note is going away, so I'm gonna have to move uh. that. Yeah, they're giving me half of it, so. For the next six months, they're going to reduce it down. So I'm going to see what's going to happen. I'm leaving my data up there. I got it backed up on the home server, so I'm good. But I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to see what they do to me when they. They're just going to uh, delete half. I don't data? know. That's what I'm going to see. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kind of see what they, what they decide to. Are do. Are they shutting down the business, or are they just deciding no, to shrink people? Well, it's again, a good way to run people off. I have a. They started a new model, and they in the model was a paid model, and they grandfathered oh. me in with 160 gig for free. Well, yeah. that's ridiculous for free, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're slowly I could I could pay for their service. So if I wanted to if I wanted to go back and get the same data that I you know, the day, same size that I have now, right? So I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna look at voila, their twenty gig is a forty dollar plan, their fifty gig is eighty, their hundred gig is a hundred and thirty. So all I could get I can't even get that much. I can get a hundred and thirty for hundred and thirty bucks I can get a hundred gig. Well, if there are there are cheaper options for that, I could get a hundred gig at Amazon. Uh, either Amazon or SkyDrive would actually be the cheapest uh, for fifty bucks. And actually, with SkyDrive, I would get fifty plus whatever I had gotten for free. So we all got twenty five gig for free back because we were all early adopters on SkyDrive. And so and I would have seventy five gigs. And how much is that for fifty gig 50, on SkyDrive? Fifty dollars. It's a dollar gig. Fifty dollars a year. Yeah, a year. Okay. Yep. So, that, Mike, that just gives you an idea. That's how helpful that matrix is, right? You can quickly go through and say, okay, what am I using it for? How am I using it? What do I need? And how does it compare uh, to so, others? Yeah, you kind of you covered um, music and file sharing. What about somebody? Uh, maybe somebody like you as a photographer who's not going to have a big collection yeah. or somebody who's uh, a serious photographer who's going to have a big collection. You know, th that's more of a, not, not so much of a sharing, but more of a um, backup. 
Right. Because, you, you, you know, we talked about backup no, time after time and time again. You want a local backup and an off-site backup. So for what have you come into anyone that you would say is the I like leader? SkyDrive. I like I like SkyDrive at this point for photos. Okay. Because it integrates really well with Windows 8. And if chances are if I'm going to be showing somebody my photos or I want access to my photos, I'm going to want to access to them on my PC. And so uh you know, here and I have a funny picture up there right now. And, but again, that's for sharing. What about for for backing up? No, it'll that'll store them on the in the cloud as well. Do you have to remember to put them up there, or is there some kind of app that will put them up there? You know, that's a good question. I think right now, so today when I take a picture on my phone, it automatically goes to Google Plus. Yeah. And it automatically goes to Dropbox. That's today. Okay. So if you were asking me what I would use today, that's what I would tell you. That's how I'm practically, and that's great. I got two copies, and I use them for different things, right? If I want to put post it to the blog. I'm going to log into Dropbox as I'm writing the blog. I'm going to pull those pictures over and put them in my blog that way. It's easy to share them on Google+. Plus. It's also easy on my phone to share them from anywhere. Oh, so, I, yeah. Yeah, that system just works. I, I, on the phone, you know, putting them on Facebook, putting them on Google is, is just so easy. But, you know, if you're a uh, DSLR shooter and you're going out and shooting you know, gigabytes of, of uh, photos every shoot, uh, something like SkyDrive is not going to work for you. Yeah. So what do you and, drop? I mean, you're in that space, right? I don't take a lot of pictures. If you are taking a lot, what what for, are you finding at this point? For my phone, I'm like you. I use Dropbox. I use Google Drive. I don't. I use, don't use um, SkyDrive. Uh, not not because I have anything against it. I just don't have that set up. Yeah. However, for my um, DSLR, I am using CrashPlan. I use CrashPlan for a lot of my data. So what I end up doing. And I'm I'm in, oh that's because I've forced it over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, what what I do is you know I download the photos. It goes to my local computer. It goes to my local backup, and then my local backup, which is running Windows uh, storage server, is running Crash Plan that then automatically starts sending it up to Crash Plan. So I you know I don't know how that Crash Plan stacks up against your others there. So somebody should go and check that out you know to see how it stacks up, but. Um, for me, that because they have unlimited storage for about fifty bucks a year, and I've got one point eight terabyte of data up there, is Crash Plan's working for me. Yeah, and that's a great price per gig, by the way. I mean, you are your I'm getting my money's per, worth. Oh out of yeah, it. yeah, for fifty bucks a year, are you kidding me? And if you're a Carbonite customer, or really if you're anybody, you can get a free year of Crash Plan right now. So head over there. You don't even really need to be a Carbonite customer. Just head over there and get it. So if you haven't tried it yet, you should. And somebody asked me about Smug Mug. So for photographers, there's a lot of choices, actually. You, there's a, a paid Flickr account you can do, where I like the Pro Flickr, where you can upload full-size photos. And for Smug Mug, you can also upload full-size. That's more for the um, serious photographer, though. You had brought up Crash Plan. So at the bottom of this um, sheet, I have all the backup offerings. So Pogo Plug, Carbonite, Crash Plan, Acronis, and Sugar Sink are the ones I have here. Doesn't mean there aren't others. I just this, those are the ones I started with, and um, and so by far you can get. Um, I mean, Crash Plan is a great deal when we talk about that fifty dollar unlimited plan. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a Cronus does a nice job for fifty bucks. You get two hundred gig at a Cronus. So if you're in that space and you're backing up some stuff, um, you can do that. If you're talking fifty dollars uh, worth of stuff. Um, those are by far the best. Carbonite does have some nice offerings. I mean, for sixty bucks, you get unlimited there as well. Yeah. The, Carbonite has three different plans, and they they do you get different features available based on what you pay for at Carbonite. So, um, it, it, they add features to your backup if you go that way. But again, that's all out there on that document. And is that they asked in chat? Kevin asked in chat. Does your um, three ten there have Beats Audio? <sighs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know I don't. if that's a joke question oh. or if that's so serious. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see if I have. Let me let me pull that. It does have audio. Let me see. I I don't know. I don't. Look at that later. Yeah. Kevin, you have to let me know if you're joking with me or not. I can't look that up. I just <laughs> don't know. I, I might have missed the joke if it was one. Um, yeah. Well, Mike, we, we've been talking an hour, uh, almost an hour and 15. Wow, that and we, by fast, yeah, yeah, well, I told you we had a lot of Windows 8 stuff to talk about. And you can I think you can kind of sense from my presentation here. We're going to, by the way, I'm going to give a very similar presentation at the Home Server Show meetup in um, 
October 20th in Indianapolis. So if you think you're anywhere near the area, you come out. All you're going to get a chance to mess with it all day too. The thing will we're going to get to touch it. Yeah, it'll be there all day. Awesome. Yeah. So um, it, it'll be very cool if you want to give it, come out and give it a run. Um, okay, so any other residual Windows 8 stuff that uh, I do want to chat a little photography with you here real quick but, uh, because we don't get you, you know, I, you, you, I know you get to talk a lot about it on your show. Um, but uh, any other thing on, Mike, any other thing on Windows 8? I do have a Windows 8 uh, Know It Guide as well. I almost said survival. A Windows 8 Know It Guide as well. And so um, I got some feedback from some folks this week. There's a, Kevin had just said in chat, there's a Windows 8 and 8 Minutes video that's out there. So if you kind of want to know, if you want to just kind of get the gist of Windows 8, um, I've linked to some videos and some blogs and such. Um, and uh, there's some great stuff around Windows 8. Again, if you've got links, this is a crowdsourced tool. So if you've got great links that you're finding, send them to me. I'll get them updated and give you the credit uh, for them as well. So anything else on Windows 8, Mike? No, you know, um, we'll just keep going with my wife and see how that works out. I think at this point it's a success. Um, you know, I don't see anything from now that, that you know, taking You don't see that. a reason why she would stop. No, I think we've yeah. made it past the hurdle, and, awesome. and yes. now I don't have to worry about it. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. It worked out great. And my kids look at it and go, do not put that on my computer. But <laughs> I th And that's part of the hurdle Microsoft's yeah, going to have yeah. to come yeah. over because I think yeah. people's initial reaction may not be positive, and that's why the marketing is so important to see that in action to, to sway them because I think at first glance it's going to turn some people off, and it's gonna, some people are going to like it. My fear is that it's going to turn more people off than it's going to turn on. And if you don't have the the marketing behind it, um, you, you may not overcome that. Because it, it, once people start to use it, then it'll be better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, well, they'll, they'll get over some hurdles. And then once gamers find out that it's got a really efficient you know, gaming right. engine or whatever, maybe it does or it doesn't. I'm making that up, by the way. Uh, you know, it'll just be – then they'll all have to have it. And it's a $40 upgrade, so it's not horribly expensive either. Well, and it's it's got holographics too. What's that? You know, 3D. It's holographic. It you know, like in Star Trek, you know, it, it displays the holographic. <laughs> it's got don't that. start it's got, rumors. It's got <laughs> laser lasers and stuff uh -huh. like that. Yeah, it's it cooks your <laughs> breakfast for you. And so, Mike, give me let's let's talk. What's hot right now in photo in the photography world? I mean, what are you guys? Are there any? Uh, is there any kind of? Uh, you know, Windows 8 is hot, at least from a Microsoft ecosystem. What are you guys talking about? Maybe not anything quite as hot as that, but, you know, one of the things uh, that a lot of people, and I just did it myself. So don't you, I don't, I'll go right here. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> 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 I just made the upgrade from my old camera to this new camera, and it looks pretty much like the old one. There's nothing, nothing special, but it's what they call full frame. So in the... Um, and they still sell the ones that are not full frame, that are what they call crop sensor. So if, what a difference is, is if you look at a lens, a lens, this is not a lens, but of course, it is some, let's use it as a symbol of a lens. It's circle, right? Right. Your, your sensor, though, is more of a square or rectangle. With a crop sensor, let's, I'm using props here that are not meant yeah, for what we're no, doing. You're good. But for a, a, a crop sensor, you've got a small section of the center of the lens that is being used to capture the image, okay? That is using the absolute best um, section of the lens. The you know the edges of the, the edges of the lens are what is the weakest part of a lens. As that mm. curve happens, okay. out of the edges is where the the weakest part, not like structural weakness, but image quality weakness, sure. happens. So you know the crop sensor lens, that's that's great. You're using the sweet spot of that, but there's disadvantages to that. There's I don't want to get too in depth here, but the the depth of field, how much of it your your uh, shot is in focus, and when you're doing people shots, you want you want really you've seen those pictures before where the person's in focus, but there's a nice creamy blur of the background behind them, that is very appealing and looks very nice, uh, and then digital noise, all that little grain that you see in an image, is worse on a crop sensor, so when you go to full frame, it's uh, let's turn this around. It's much bigger. It's taking much more. It's going right up to the edges of the of the lens. So there's a little bit of an issue there with the. You got to have a little bit better quality lens to um, <clears throat> to to make sure you don't have issues there. Or you might have to do a little bit in so in adjustments in software. Recently, um, you know, this camera that I had I just showed was a 
not the, quite the pro line, but one step down from the pro line. Nikon and Canon just come out with their entry, what they call an entry level full frame camera. And for Nikon, it's D600. It's, you know, when I say entry level, you know, what's the price of, of, of that? It's around $2,000. So still pretty expensive. Still pretty expensive. Level. Yeah. But, you know, that's entry level to get in on a full frame camera that's going to give you that great blurred background, is going to give you much better noise characteristics. And why you care about that is when you get into bad light, you can bump up the sensitivity of the sensor, which is called ISO. You can bump up that sensitivity and continue to take pictures in lower light without having that noise that's going to destroy the image. And as you <coughs> decrease the ISO, right, you open that. Do you, no, do you, the ISO. you open that wider? It just gets more sensitive. The ISO, so there's three components to exposure. One is how long the shutter's open. That's the shutter speed. Right. How w big open it is. And that is called the aperture or f-stop. And then the third component is ISO, and that's the sensitivity of the, the sensor. Almost like a gain on audio where you turn it up the gain or turn it down the gain. There's a bass gain, and then you can turn it higher to get make it more sensitive. And As you make it more sensitive, it adds digital artifacts to the image. And in the old film days, was that film speed? That was ISO? It was. It was okay. called film speed, ASA, um, okay. You would get 400 wow, speed look film. At me, or I actually know something. Yeah. That's kind of scary. <laughs> you, you know, in the old days, you'd have to get film and you'd stick that, let's say, uh, ASA 800 or ASA, ASA 1600 film in your camera, and that's what you shot with. That was it. Yeah, yeah. If you wanted to shoot with something else, you needed to put out the film in. Now it's just a dial on the camera. You just switch it, switch it to something else. You'd have multiple cameras, right? So if you were shooting an event where you wanted a different speed or you knew you were going to need to change fast, you'd have to carry a couple of cameras with you Absolutely. With, that, with that film loaded. Yeah. Yes. I remember those days uh, when when you go to a wedding and the photographer would have almost a case just for his film, right? I mean, he would he would shoot rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of film. Because not only not only were you shooting rolls of film, but you had to have multiple types right. along with it. Yeah. Now you know uh, Tim out in chat asked, "Is the D six hundred overpriced at two thousand dollars?" And you know maybe a little bit. I I would I was hoping it would come out somewhere around fifteen hundred. Um, it does have you know HD video. The the new SLRs are also coming with video. It's not going to be as good as let's say you go to a soccer game and you've got your old. You know, your digital video camera that you've walked around, you're, you're moving around, you're taking video with it like that. An SLR really wants to be like tripod mounted or still where you're you're doing more, um, you know, controlled environment um, video. But when you do that, it is excellent video. Is that because the stabilization, it's not really as designed for stabilization software as some of those video cameras, right, have this, vi this stabilization built in, which actually manipulates the image in real time to give you that to give you that more stable look or feel so it doesn't feel like the camera's shaking. Yeah, that that could be part of it. I think uh, at first at least with these things they they weren't great at vi um, um, focusing. So you basically wanted the focus be in one spot and have your action move through that focus mm -hmm, point. Mm -hmm. They have gotten better with that. But you know like I they filmed a, uh, one of the shows of House with an SLR. And was that a D D Mark? That was a uh, Maybe a Mark II or something like that. Yeah, it was a, a Canon, right? Five D Mark II, I think, is yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, that was a that was a Canon, and you know, in that kind of situation, while you do have TV shows and movies where there's people running around with cameras, a lot of those times those things are mounted on something, and they may have them on like r little railroad tracks where they're moving around, something like that, but they are not bouncing around with them like you would at a soccer game. Yeah, no, and I've I've seen some of those mo those uh, movies that they did with them, and it's great. But you're right; I think they're yeah they're they are mounting them, and that seems kind of weird, right? To have this little tiny camera uh, taking I shouldn't say tiny because yours is yeah. pretty good size, but it's bigger than I mean it's smaller than the cameras, the video cameras they use when they make movies. Well, you, yeah, and when I used to be at a soccer game, and I, I I would shoot with a much bigger lens than this, so it would be a huge lens. I would have people come up to me, and this was years ago, ask me if I'm you know, if I'm taking video. And at that time, there was no video in SLRs, and I would think, you know, you're an idiot. No, this is not a, <laughs> this is a camera. This is I'm not a... photographer, not this, a... This is not a video camera. But now that, that is the case. It's, you know, they've, they've moved more and more stuff into there. It does um, give you more options, better. right? Because if you're in a spot where you do want to capture uh, video of it, um, you can just flip that over and, and make that work. Yeah. Now, one more downside to go, if you're like me and you were on a crop sensor camera and you're now moving to a, a full frame camera 
all your lenses may not work on the full frame camera. Really? Yeah. So like I in an icon in an icon world, the, the crop sensor is called DX, and the full frame is called FX. You probably can't see it, but there's a little bitty FX. Uh, barely see it. A little bit of FX on this camera. So if I, I have a lens that is a DX lens that worked on my, yeah, you can't see that. A little bit of lens, that, uh, a lens that worked on my crop sensor camera. When I put it on this camera, it'll still work, but it's going to work in only crop mode, which means that my 12 megapixel camera is now only a 5 megapixel. So there is a disadvantage where all your lenses may not work. Uh, if you are on a crop sensor camera now i would advise to stop buying crop sensor lenses you know you may already have some but i would stop i wouldn't buy any more because at some point someday you're probably going to want to go full frame okay so there you go that's there, that's good that's good yeah. that's that's like a that's like a little morsel from jpeg to raw yeah, and I tried the, to do it with some guy. some props, so you. Can yeah, no, very good. <laughs> you you got all kinds of crap on that desk. I do. What's I do. what's the weirdest thing that you can grab right now? Uh, how about <laughs> a ketchup packet? <laughs> That's awesome. If is that been, weird enough? That is good. If you've been listening, if you've only just started listening to the show, uh, Mike and I have been doing this for a while, and he always can just pull anything. Every time we're talking, I imagine this endless space desk that he has in front of him because he, he seems that he can pull uh, anything out of there. And You know what? We didn't do a great job. We didn't do a great job of letting your listeners know you were going to be over here tonight. I didn't do a great um, job of, yeah. of posting that. That's okay. We'll, Jackie's we'll, here. Jackie's she is, here. So. She's the faithful. She's like the JPEG to Raw groupie that uh, that comes over whenever you're, you're over here. So, Jackie, yeah. great to have you. Before we head out, Jackie, did you catch our show Tuesday night? To give see her a the, the yeah. I wonder if she saw the props that we had for Tuesday night. Uh, yeah, yeah. When is that going? Um, when is that show going to go live on your? Well, the, I was going to work on it tonight. on demand. Okay. Yeah, but I. <laughs> I, I, I so it looks like it's going. It looks like it's going to be tomorrow night. This weekend. This weekend. <laughs> this sometime. weekend. Yeah. She so saw. Ja- she did. She did get to see the prop. The prop was. Yeah. A wig. I won't and the reason is, wig. yeah, the reason is because the guest, like the guest had a fro. Yeah, the guest had a fro. He had a big fro. So, well, uh, wow, that was uh, you know it's fun to get through Windows eight uh, and and work through some of those things. I'm sure that's going to show up again. I mean, it's going to sit here until the twentieth at least when we head out to Indianapolis. And and again, if you want to join us in Indianapolis, you're welcome to do that. Just head out to thehomeservershow.com. dot com. There will be a link. Um, you can sign up for it. Actually, if you go to theaverageguy.tv, I've got a countdown counter there. That was redundant. Sorry about that. But I've got a countdown um, graphic. Click on that, and it'll take you. You can, if you think you might want to join us, you can click on that and get some more information about the uh, the meetup and the the sign up is for it. There, we're just asking people to RSVP. I'm still working on uh, Mike Howard. He he doesn't want to drive the. It's 600, right? It's under six, isn't it's it? It's under 600 miles. Yes. Yeah. 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 You should. You should. You know, you I, really I, I complained it. about it, but you know, this last weekend I drove 200 miles just yeah. driving up into the mountains looking for places to shoot. Yeah. That was just uh, driving around. You could around. be there. I think I'm leaving Thursday. I'm going to try and hang out with Chris Lux in St. Louis uh, Thursday night. I have a beer with him, you know, whatever. I don't I don't get enough Chris Lux time. And then uh, uh, that morning I'll head out of St. Louis, and it's a pretty quick, I don't know, it's pretty six or seven hours from St. Louis to Indianapolis maybe. Pretty quick. And, and oh, hey, when you live in Omaha and it's three <laughs> hours to anything, yeah, it, it's like after you run a marathon, running a half marathon is not that big of a deal. Okay. So um, I just, this last Sunday I got, if you're a runner, if you listen, by the way, if you listen to us at all and you're a runner, um, I haven't really talked much about my running, but uh, you can go out to theaverageguy.me. That's my running blog, Emmy, like me, um, and uh, love to connect with you on running. I'm I'm not uh, I'm st- I'm a big guy. I'm the size of a middle linebacker in the NFL. I'm 225, and I still uh, I finished a half marathon this last Sunday and uh, and got it done. So it just awesome. uh, you don't have to be a skinny, uh, super fit athlete to 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 be fit. You can do that as well. And so the average guy TV dot or the average guy dot me. There you go. Get you out there. 
Very good. Okay, very good. Uh, I also want to let you know we also have all the links to automatically subscribe or to watch this on demand out at theaverageguy.tv. So look for those links They're in the right hand column along with all the other stuff that we have out there. Of course, you can find us on Reddit, YouTube, iTunes, Google, even Facebook by searching the Average Guy Podcast. Please leave some comments, likes, votes, plus ones, all those other helpful social uh, signals that help us know that you're engaged in what we are doing. And, of course, there's a very active Facebook group right now. We tend to be a little bit Windows Phone and Windows 8 heavy, but that's okay. That's what's going on right now, and the guys are kind of engaged around that, and I'm totally cool with that. And so if you want to join in on the Windows 8 um, discussion, if this demo, and hopefully if you're listening to the audio, come back out to YouTube and uh, and get on the YouTube the YouTube channel, and uh, you can watch. You'll want to watch the video because we did a lot of demo tonight that uh, – that you that you will want to see um, all that stuff uh, yeah and if you're on YouTube right now before you go tonight click a click the plus one or the like or the whatever give that that uh, that stuff always helps us out and uh, don't forget we have an Amazon affiliate link out there as well that helps me pay the bandwidth I finally made it it, seems, it takes me about a year to get the uh, the AdSense up to the point where it pays for the website so it's oh, almost nice. on a nice it's actually paying for itself at this point. So, and speaking kind of, of that, before you leave, don't do it yet. But right below us is an ad, right? Below yeah. the chat. Mm-hmm. Don't do it yet because it will take you off the page. Yeah. But right below us is an ad, and you, uh, as you go to leave, uh, click on that, and and Jim Show gets a little bit yeah, of credit. That helps. That helps. Uh, every but little bit helps. Don't do it yet. Helps me buy. No, don't do it yet. Helps me. Helps me buy these kinds of things so I can do the demos that we do for you and and that kind of stuff. So we always, I always try and reinvest all that stuff back into the show. So, Mike, thanks for uh, being the quick, you know, uh, Johnny on the spot, so to yeah, speak. A lot of fun. And Enjoyed yeah. uh, watching the Windows 8 demo. You bet. It was good. And, and thanks for sharing. And and uh, again, if people want to find you at JPEG to Raw, uh, that's JPEG two, the number two, JPEG and Raw two Raw. Yes. And uh, or they can find you at NovStudios.com, uh, right? That, yep. That's the yep. site. And uh, or JPEG to Raw com gets you there either way. If you're a photographer, you want to be out there. That's where all the cool kids are. And uh, Mike's building a nice community out there, a nice friendly community. You can do that as well. We'll be back next Thursday. A little questionable. I'll be in Southern California. And so I've uh, got to figure out how this is travel season for me. So I've got a, every fall and spring, there's about two months where i got to kind of figure out the show schedule. So watch that Twitter account. Um, it just kind of depends on how things go. I actually haven't even lined up any guests yet, so I, still have to, I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get it done or not. So we'll, we'll try and th- uh, throw a quick show together next Thursday live from Southern California and uh, from the heart, maybe from the heart of the campus at uh, University of Southern California. And uh, that'll be kind of fun uh, because you don't want to leave the campus there for sure. So thanks for coming out tonight. Thanks for listening. Stay around for the post show. We'll talk for a few few more minutes, but this will end the audio recording. Everybody, thanks for coming out. Good night. Good night, everybody. (laughs) You've been waiting to do that. I have been waiting. (laughs) (laughs) I came so close one time to doing this. Oh, no. But no. I said, no, I'm going to keep it clean. If I wasn't, if I was asking questions and I wasn't getting anybody to <laughs> it was You were trying to do something on the the Windows 8 yeah, machine. Yeah, and it wasn't. And it it wasn't is still a little it. clumsy in some spots. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and, and I want it to be said that I found these before Andrew. So when Andrew's on next um, and he sees these and goes wild, yeah. yeah so don't, it, don't tell Andrew, please. <laughs> I was gonna, please don't tell Andrew. <laughs> He's going to eventually find him. You know he is. I know, but you know how he is. He <laughs> likes to goof around with all those things. I can't keep the guy. Yeah. So uh, um, Rennie says the crowd goes wild. So Rennie, there's a few of these out here. Uh, and I won't go through all of them, but you heard the clapping and you there's the drum roll. Oh, that'd be nice. And the winner is when we, when we exactly. do it. Exactly. I can I see know. me actually using that one. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah, of the others, maybe not. The app, So which app is this now? In? This is just the Google Effects. Oh, so I you, never even turned on my lower third tonight. I'm such yeah, a rookie. I didn't God. either. What a loser. Either. But, you know, the, there's the clock. And you, it, it, does it have Jeopardy? That no, would be cool. There's not, there's not a whole lot. So I take it that the chat, you guys can hear those noises. It's not just Jim and I because uh, the crowd, somebody yeah. said the crowd goes wild. So yeah. I, I, so Ren, I think Rennie heard it. That's pretty cool. I wonder what the sound, what is the sound What's quality What's the name like? of it called? It's just the Google effects. Google effects. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Right. 
Fail tune. Price is right. Fail tune. They have. Ooh, they have a rip. They have that. Nice. They have a Warlight. They have a game called Warlight, which is like Risk for Google Plus Hangouts. So you could play. You remember how we used to get together and play Risk on the? Do you ever play Risk? Oh yeah, I love Risk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and on the board game, so they have a game in. So now you can play it in a Hangout. I wonder what that'd be like. Huh. They have that one. There you go for the joke. It looks like I am going to play them all. <laughs> so look look at all the free. Just look on the screen for a second. Okay, wait. The 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 app you just talked about, the wrist thing, was Google+. Plus. Hang That's out. a Google+. Plus. Yeah, now yeah. you're back. But you're on I'm the back to the, app for Windows 8. Windows 8, yeah. I mean, there's this is the top 99. So it's just the... Yeah. the, the and there's, there's quite a few of them out there. I mean, it's not um, NBC News and... Um, yeah, you know, the other Jim out there in chat saying if, if we had the lower third... It might have blocked some of that, but you know oh, what we're yeah. doing here, though, is we're you're you're doing a screen share, so it probably wouldn't have blocked it. Yeah, the one the screen share one wouldn't yeah. have had the lower third. But uh, uh, other Jim, I appreciate you being kind to me and blowing it <laughs> by not putting the windows the, the lower um, third up. So, or the or the, you think there's not as many out there as I I thought of the, some bigger ones, but those are probably coming with launch, maybe like a Facebook app. I think so. Well, iHeartRadio is out there, okay. Um, which is uh, if a lot of folks have been using iHeartRadio to get their favorite radio station if they moved or whatever, because you can listen. You know, even your local stations, you can listen to iHeartRadio from work. What about you, a, you know. Pandora? Uh, I do. I do not think Pandora has made it out. I think that'll be one that comes live at launch. Yeah. Because uh, certainly they're going to want to be on this platform. Because we got to remember, we are using this pre-launch. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good. Because you know, I when I put it on my wife's computer, um, in my she's kit, testing it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's my computer. She just has to be testing. She's it. testing it. She's just borrowing my computer. She's giving you customer experience. <laughs> she is. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can make that claim. Yeah. But, I, you know, my, my kids like to tell their friends, hey, we got Windows 8. And uh, the friend goes, Windows 8? That's not out. How'd you get that? Like, well, you know, you do, we do have to remember that yeah. some of these apps are not going to be there yet because right. we are using it pre-launch. Yeah. I, I bet there will be a host. There, I bet they're holding some back. Um, for launch, Kindle is out there. That's so, and, and I, I messed around. I don't have a Kindle account. I'm thinking of getting one. Um, eBay is out there. Um, of course, we talked about OneNote, um, it, the, and these are the most popular ones. This is not all of them. Evernote is out there. Wikipedia. There's a Bing app, which is pretty cool. StumbleUpon has its own app. If you're yeah. if you do that on StumbleUpon, there's a, a remote desktop app that's out there. So I saw that. Yeah. Um, if you want to, and I tried that out. That works pretty well. I actually remoted into my home server <laughs> from from Windows 8 from the Metro. My, uh, Randy says my uh, my wife's new book, My Life as a Lab Rat. <laughs> 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 nice. I uh, you know what I really liked is I think about buying her Fifty Shades of Grey for Christmas. What do you think? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Uh, that's never bad. Um, I liked TED. So, uh, what if is you've TED? Ever, so TED are these short little ten minute videos. This oh yeah, this organization comes up with and TEDx. Um, yeah, and they 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 publish a couple a week, and so really good. I have no idea what's going to happen here when I actually when the they video need a podcast app. Who? Oh, oh I'm Metro, sure a Metro podcast. Yeah. App. Oh, that's I, cool. I'm sure there is. Uh, I'm sure there is one. Yeah, it's gonna. It's not gonna look great on YouTube. Um, and these are Creative Commons, so I won't get booted off YouTube for it either. But um, uh, that is. Uh, so yeah, you get this is the TED. This is the TED interface that's in there, and I love these little these little videos. They're really thought provoking. You know, the, some really smart guys they have on here. So. That's out there. Uh, they actually have that, I think, available for as a Chrome um, browser plugin as well. Um, so, and I'm sure there's more efficient ways. You know, sometimes I go back to the start when I could just pull it out from here. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the, you know what? The other thing I didn't cover is right. So, say I want, um, uh, say I want one of these apps to be half the screen. So, right. I can pull that. I can pull that out if I just set it there. Then, that that this is a bad example of it. But that TED, um, the TED app now is a, just a fourth of the screen, right? It so it just takes up that spot, and then I could yank this over to the center, and it'll make it. Well, in this case, it takes it to the other side. So now the store is a third, 
okay. or a quarter, and Ted takes up. But watch how Ted changes. So this is really cool. What comes with when it comes to Metro, right? If you took a regular web page, you know, say we took some web pages and we we splashed them out to the to the two sides, so you had one on one side, one on the other. And that's and, what I got right now. I, I have yeah, the yeah. Windows key left, Windows key right, and I've got half screen for two th different things. So in most cases, that app is not going to be responsive. It's just going to it's going to adjust for that, and it'll probably cut some stuff off. So watch what happens on the screen with the TED app. Now this is the beauty of that Metro piece. Watch it adjust. See how it changed to a completely different format. So now you yeah. s you still can see it. it it's running down. That's in the programming. That's a feature, right, where you give it different. So when you're in this mode, you do this. And when you're in this mode, you do that. And it's a little bit of responsive design. Now, you've done like a, either a third or fourth. Can you do half? Can you split it down the um, middle? I think so. Let me see. I, I think I have to have two apps that support the split oh, okay. screen. I'm sure you can. Let yeah. me. And I think even if I showed the video here, so if I clicked on that, you see how that's different? Now, I know and on a desktop, the desktop works just like Windows 7 where you can do the Windows left, Windows right. Right, if you're over on the desktop version yeah. of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me see. Let me pu push that back in so that went away. And uh, let well, me now I wish I could find one of those $200 things. Um, the cheapest I can find it for well, is keep, $400. Keep, keep looking. Um, oh, that's still running. You're making uh, me want see. one. Let me. Well, I don't know if there's a half or not. Right now, it doesn't look like it, but you can see I've got my site now in the third and, or in the fourth, and I've got the um, I've got the store in the other one. I have to mess. I have not. I'll be honest with you. I have not messed with that feature very much. Might be more fun to put the Ted app over there. There we go. So now I got my I've got my site up on one screen and I've got Ted rolling in the So now imagine this on a tablet, right? I mean how mm -hmm. cool is that? That is very cool, yeah. Does the iPad do that? I don't know. You know, so you and I have talked a little bit about what I'm I'm creating a war room. Did you know so this is a, this I'm not tell you I, we are a private company, the company I work for, so I gotta be careful what I say, but yeah, this yeah, is public sure. this is public knowledge. Okay, good. Is the uh FEMA has a their their um, disaster index is called the Wafos index. <laughs> That's the, the awesome. Waf the Wafos index. And, and it's how, they, how long it takes uh, Waffle House to come on the scene, right? No, Do it is no. Uh, what menu are we operating at? If we're operating at a full menu, everything's fine. If we're operating at a limited menu, there's issues. If we're closed, yeah. it's a disaster. Ah. And you know what? <laughs> they've got. They, it's not just talk now. They've actually gone as far as. We send them the data on what we're doing, you know, closed, limited menu, whatever, and they're feeding it into their whatever thing to, so they can gauge how bad things are there. I guess they can't actually show up for whatever reason and find out for themselves. Right. <laughs> right. Which is what we do. That's funny. But uh, I yeah. am building a war room. You know, now that I get to be more on the tech side, I'm still the accounting side, but yeah. I, I love the tech side of it. We're building a war room, so we got a big 70-inch touchscreen monitor coming and two 55-inch uh, touchscreen monitors coming. And I think uh, they're probably going to come with Windows 7 loaded on them. I'm thinking about at least one of them dumping that and putting Windows 8 on it. Yeah. If not well, on. and and try multi-monitor on Windows 8. You might find it's just really handy to slide things over. Okay, I'm uh, that would this. be nice. But the way we're building it is each monitor is going to have its own PC because ah, oh, gotcha. We, we're not like in a mouse without bird. borders. I wonder how that would work. Yeah. We, it, well, okay. So here's the deal. We're, you know, since we're not in a, a continuous hurricane mode, right, right, and non-hurricane, these things will probably be broken up and used for different purposes. Right. But during hurricane mode, we'll wheel them all in together because they'll, oh, be they'll be on mobile stands, okay. and then we will use um, mouse without borders to control all those screens. Okay. Yeah. No, mouse without borders works great. I use it here for the show all the time. I should, yeah, well, that would make that, you know, and I think there's going to be, now that Microsoft's really does have a real surface now, I think there's going to, that's going to just get more and more prevalent where you can flick those. Yeah. I mean, how cool would it be just, okay, I'm just going to flick that over there for now and I'll, I'll grab it and pull it back and then add the, and I, God, I wish Jay Moore, I need to get him on the show. Um, Jay had talked about, they've got a little device that's going to sit in front of your monitor and it will turn your monitor into a hand you know, a gesture, you can make gestures over the device hmm. and it will act like a touchscreen. 
I forget what it's called. Chat room, help me out with that. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. If there's a certain name for it, um, so but it it basically makes a it, it takes uh, hand gestures, and you know who knows what'll come with Connect eventually. You know, Connect at the desktop and some of yeah, those. Yeah, you know, I wish they would, uh, and maybe they will with this uh, in the next version of the Xbox. Bring Skype to the Xbox. You know, because yeah, now I think as, it's coming soon. As people have the uh, the Connect. You got the video there, you know. Um, it sometimes be nice to be able to go ahead and connect and you know dial out and talk to a family member or whoever else while you're sitting on the couch, uh, right through the Xbox. The Xbox needs to be, and I think they're moving in this direction, a more and more part of the the family room. There is no Skype app for this yet. I bet that's coming at launch. Yeah, they got to have a Skype app for it. They own I'm, I'm searching the store. It's not no, no, not yet. I mean, for launch, they yeah. got to have that for launch. Yeah, or, so or, I could or put shortly the, thereafter. I could put the Windows Seven version of it on here uh, if I wanted to. You know, I could go. Um, I could go out. Let me let me get out of this. So I could come over here to Chrome. Come on, that's where it's just it's just a smidgen not responsive enough, and. Uh, and then, oh, so on the desktop, right? So let me bring this back up here. This is something I didn't get time to. This is the bonus material on the YouTube video. So, okay. so I'm on the desktop, and you'd be like, well, how do I invoke? So how do I get the keyboard? So in the bottom right hand corner down here, in the in the uh, by the by the you know the, oh, it actually did it without me touching it. Um, the, there's a there's a little button that says touch keyboard and the keyboard pops up so you can you can pop that up for when you're on the desktop side so it's a little it's a little nice way to get into it so in this case I'm gonna go to Skype and uh, and let's get that so it'll and then I'll put that away go away in there and and you can see i mean it, even with the even with it i'm going to say get skype i mean this works pretty well i'm going to mm -hmm. get the windows version i'm going to download it is it still working over there yeah okay so yeah, yeah you can see um i'm going to sign in so a pretty uh i again i think it works on windows it would work on windows 7 in this in this form factor pretty well yeah i don't know if i would want to do it full time this, no, but at least you know. At least um, you have the option now. If if you know if they can get monitors where the touch versus the non-touch price was not that much different in yeah. price, yeah. then why not buy the touch? Because at least you have the option. Oh, you know what Kevin uh, says in chat? Uh, Gateway and Acer both make an all uh, an all-in-one touch screen device as well. You might want to add that to your search if you're looking on on hmm. Craig's list or okay. Asus might make one too. Well, you know, that's what Gary crap. did. So Gary Johnson, well, the Asus aren't bad. Uh, Gary Johnson took his Asus tablet, which had been running Windows 7, and loaded Windows 8 on it. Hmm. Very good. I guess we lost Jackie. Jackie gone? Maybe yeah, so. Jackie's maybe gone. maybe all the tech talk drove her away. Yeah. Well, I... Uh, I'm going to actually try and go to bed. I think I've had two late late nights. We've had uh we did a we had a manager's retreat all week at Gallup and uh and so we had late two late evenings like till 9 or 10. Yeah. And then uh we had all the managers in town. So you can't you got to take an opportunity when the manager's in town to have an after party. Sure. So a couple nights I was uh we were out at the hotel lobby for for another couple hours. So I got in bed pretty late. The last two days, I feel good now, but the second I hang this this call up, man, I am absolutely going to crash. <laughs> it is no, going to be it is going to be ugly. So, Mike, yeah, uh, thank it was, thanks again, and uh, YouTubers uh, that are watching out there, we're going to end the the YouTube uh, broadcast now. Thanks for joining us again. I remind folks if you're you caught in on this some other way other than theaverageguy.tv, you can join us uh, at theaverageguy.tv slash live Thursday nights, eight p.m. Central, nine p.m. Eastern, and. Uh, 8 to 6 p.m. Pacific. Next week I'll be in the Pacific time zone and get a chance to do this from, from sunny California. So thanks, guys. Appreciate you coming out tonight. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs>